Hello, welcome. My name is Don Christian and I'm a United States Air Force veteran. Spent the last 10 years researching my uh, father's participation in World War I. Um, I didn't know it growing up as a kid that my dad was uh, in World War I. It was only after he died. And uh, it was only after he died that uh, my mother gave me a photo album in a manila envelope says, yeah, dad wanted you to have this. I didn't think anything of it till around 2010 and 11 when I was in a, a VA a clinic uh, waiting room and I picked up a magazine and she said the last World War I veteran had passed away, Fred Buckles. And it got me thinking and I went back and dug up my photo album and sure enough, uh, my dad had been uh, in France and he had documented his whole trip with a bunch of photographs. So this series uh, is going to tell that story of my father's participation in World War I. It's going to talk about the 18th Engineers Regiment that was trained out of American Lake, Camp Lewis, up in Washington, and the seven western states that all came together. The men all arrived up there after in-processing and to begin their training. What I didn't know is the... My father was among the first to go to France in late August of 1917. So I'm just going to start showing pictures here. This first one is, this is of my father. This is taken uh, on July 23rd, about a week before they left for uh, uh, France. So he's in his uh, uniform. He actually, uh, you can see on the photograph, he's actually got two different dates and two different inks. And uh, as I was growing up, I guess as, as my dad went through life, he would look at his album and just rejot the date down for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, I'm not sure if this is a photograph taken by the government, like a standard photographer getting one by one, getting the troops to stand in front of a tree because there are other photographs that uh, I have of similar type of poses. So, so that was one of the first photographs that was in the album. <clears throat> uh, this one here is a postcard. Uh, that he sends to his girlfriend at the time, Avis Wisner. And it says and it's not stamped. You'll notice that it hasn't uh, been stamped. So I don't know if he wrote this and hand delivered it or he never delivered it. It says, Dear Avis, here's a picture of a part of Company C just after receiving their first shots, tetanus shots. Notice marks on some of the boys' arms. Looks like blood, but nope, only iodine. And then he signs it Earl. Right in the middle, it's June 19th. So, uh, on the card with the lettering, he's got the date right in the middle, and then again, June 19th on above the men. So as you're looking, look on the far left, the gentleman behind the, the tree branch with a hat on, and the white t-shirt, he's no young spring chicken. And then the guy right below him, kneeling with his arm on his left knee, his left arm, you can see the iodine splotch on his arm there. Uh, and then my father is dead center. There's a guy very front uh, leaning on his left arm with his leg brought up. My dad is crouching right behind him with a big smile and a hat on at a cocked angle. One of my favorite photographs. Uh, this photograph is called The Squad. And it says Company D, 18th Engineers, U.S. Regiment. And as you look at it, you can see it's horribly faded. There is some information in it. You can clearly see the shadow. That possibly might be my dad taking this photograph. But in the back, you see the tents. And there'll be other photographs with these tents. So these guys were living in tents. There was no barracks that were built yet at Camp Lewis. And these guys are just crouching, called the squad. And again, he's written the squad on the pages of the, of the photo album, and he wrote the squad on the actual photograph. 
and there's no border. You're going to notice as you look at these photographs, some have borders, some don't. They're different formats, different sizes, different layouts. Um, that was one of the big questions with all these pictures is what camera? How many cameras? Where did you buy the film? How do you store the film? Where do you store the exposed film? Where do you send the picture? Did you hang? So many questions about these photographs. And this next one here. This is squad number one, Company D, 18th Engineers. And these nine men are lined up. You can see some guys in the background hanging out. And you can see the tops of tents. And no real facial. I can't really recognize anyone as my father. He might be taking this picture. I just don't know. One of the reasons I'm doing this is because as we go through these pictures up, there are names and dates and places and times where these pictures were taken and there are names of other uh, American troops, uh, uh, young men that were made to call the war. My goal is through hopefully social media as I put this series out and I begin to show pictures and, and release names. Uh, if you had a grandfather, a father, an uncle, a brother, a great grandfather, any of these with these last names that, that are posted, perhaps this is your loved one. This one here is pretty self-explanatory. When do we eat? Company D, ready for eats. And again, he's written it twice, once on the picture, once underneath on the photo page. And in both of those, he put parentheses around the word eats. So a lot of detail here. These guys are pretty relaxed. There's a couple of guys. There's one guy here on the end who has a, uh, like a vest, like a, you know, like a white shirt and a vest. And next to him is another couple of guys in white shirts there. But, but see all the tents? And then you can see the poles. Probably, uh, that's probably lighting, maybe early telephone communications, telegraph. And then you see the, uh, the officers either getting their head count or getting ready to release them to go eat. But that's a lot of guys they got to feed. Now this next photo is, again, one of my favorites as I've looked at it many, many times. This is uh, a hike. So this one says Company D, E, and F on a 10-mile hike. American Lake, Washington, July 10th, 1917, the second battalion on the march. So you can clearly see the dust that's being raised. Um, there's one lone pole there. I'm not sure if that's a flagpole or if that's got uh, wires coming off it. So you see quite a few men marching away from the camera. In fact, they all seem to be marching away from the camera. Uh, there is a guy in a black suit with a hat and he's got something in his hand and I can't tell if he's marching away from the camera or towards it. I often wonder what's in that little attache that he's carrying. Split rail fence. Um, yeah, pretty dry and dusty July 10th, I'll bet. Again, one of my favorite photographs, and it just shows the slice of life of the reality of the soldier getting ready to go to war. So these next two are at the firing range. And this one is Company D watching Company F at skirmish formation July 14th. At the target range, American Camp, American Lake Camp Lewis. So, um, I'm not sure what the rifles are. I can see that several of them have the uh, probably the bayonet attachment hanging from their belts. They all have uh, utility belts. Um, 
Yeah, they're all looking at the camera. They've all got their hats on except a couple of the guys. And this next one. Part of Company D on a 10-mile hike, American Lake. So this would be... That was the ten, that was the July tenth. That's July tenth. Part of Company D on a ten mile hike, and they all have their weapons. It's interesting because they're engineers, and my father ended up being at Basson's. Never saw action. He was busy building this massive infrastructure at the Basson's, uh, France. So, now here we get into some names. I am not sure. I have really nothing other than I'll just show this. This one is in my dad's album and it says, Four Comers, Four Woodbees, American Lake. So these are four young lads. Uh, pants, shirt, hat. They all have a canteen. They all have a rifle. The rifle's as tall as them. It's as long as they are. They all got big old smiles because they're they're playing soldier. And the one guy's barefoot. The others seem to have shoes of some sort. Well, maybe two of them are barefoot. But we don't know if these are sons of of uh, some of the guys that are in the you know in the 18th engineers. Visiting friends, relatives, don't know, local Boy Scout troop or some kind of a early group like that. Interesting. A little faded. So the 91st. So the, uh, the book by Alice Palmer Henderson, the 91st, the first at Camp Lewis, these are the first to train after my father left, because he left in, you know, August 1st uh, for, uh, for New York. So the barracks hadn't even been built at Camp Lewis. And this is a fascinating book that we'll get into because of uh, its implications. So with that in mind, the 91st used horses. And one of their battle cries, if you will, was letter buck. And that was, you know, trying to break the horses. And this is, this, this is breaking an outlaw. And it's a faded picture, but this guy is breaking a horse out in a clearing, surrounded by about 10 or so uh, uh other other guys, right? So this next one. Northern Pacific Railroad Shop Girls out of Pasco, Washington. So now as you look at this picture, there's one, two, three, there's six, there's seven women in the photograph, all, all in coveralls and utility shirts. Got shop hats on, and uh, no nonsense. As World War I and the call went out, women stepped up to take the men's positions. So, because the railroad industry at that time was so heavily manual, you know, big wrenches and big heavy things, right, to put a locomotive together and make it run, somebody had to do that work. And they did. So this is one picture. I'm not sure if he was on the train looking out the window at this or not. So as they as they left, they got on a troop train. And this is uh, Mandan, South Dakota. I believe it's North Dakota. But I'll have to double check that. That's my father leaning out the window. And then the next picture is a 
they greeted us at the depot at Mandan, South Dakota. So here's all these young women looking at all these handsome young men going off to war and hearts a flutter and maybe the last, the last beautiful woman they'll see for a while and maybe flowers and notes were exchanged and perhaps kisses, you never know. So there's that. This is one of my favorite photographs. This is my father. Leaving American Lake again, he's written twice on the photograph. Once on the picture and once on the pages. Leaving American Lake, August 1st. Arrived France, September 1st. Actually, they arrived a little bit earlier than that. So that's my dad leaning out the window. He's got a, something around his neck. Sure wish, sure wish I knew what that was. And you got a big old smile, and they all do. So this one is very interesting. They stopped briefly in Minnesota at Lake Pippin. Okay. So this one says, at Lake Pippin in Minnesota, quote, quotes, just before a rainstorm. And as I read the history of the 18th engineers in detail, they talk about, you know, baths were infrequent. And this was one of the last real times when they got wet and were able to clean up, if you will. But you look at this, these little pup tents. This is like Civil War type stuff, right? This is, this is what you do in your backyard with a rope and a blanket. And then my dad wrote on the picture, it says, solid comfort. So he stood here, looked down this row of tents, took this picture, and then pivoted, I'm sure, to his right, and took this picture. So it's, it's the Lake Pippin, Minnesota, which he writes on the photo. It says Lake Pippin again, in parentheses, and something else. And it's a superimposed picture of the previous picture. You can see the tents that were in the previous picture and the, the legs, the, the legs of the guys there. So somehow a FUBU back in the day, he didn't, uh, he didn't advance the film. I'm not sure how that worked. So anyway, this is a picture. This is actually glued into the cover of the album a lot of information on this so it's clearly a postcard in the original red border he writes it's, it says on the postcard the saxonia leaving new york harbor for europe with american troops it's the rms saxonia the royal mail service saxonia rms and then he writes in it in several different notes. At the top, he says, I spent my 21st birthday ab aboard en route to France, August 7th, 1917. He was born on August 7th, 1896. And then below, he wrote, August 4th, 1917 is when they were leaving New York Harbor. Later sank by the German U-boat. And I've had to document that. There's a little discrepancy in that note. I'm not sure why he wrote that, but I will uh, I'll flush that out. So, now we're getting into some names. So, here we go. So, take a good look here, folks. If you're watching this, if you had relatives that were in World War One, if your last name was Lydell, or Hermanson, this is pictures of them. This is on board the RMS Saxonia. And again, he writes it twice on the paper and on the photo. And he wrote their names. That's all he wrote. And I believe I found their names on the uh, uh, roster behind me. Taken... Probably the same time, same guy, different guy on the right or the left. If these are your relatives, let me know. It's 
gives you an idea of what it was like on board the ship, packed to the gunnels. And this one says, the bow of the RMS Saxonia is written on the photo, and then below it, somewhere on the Atlantic aboard the English ship Saxonia. And they have rudimentary life jackets on, life vests, if you will, just looks like probably cork wrapped in canvas would be my guess. So, and then the 18th engineers traveled across on the Saxonia. The 19th engineers also were aboard the Saxonia. He took a picture of this guy this says, written on the photo, a dub of the 19th Engineers U.S. And then that's all written on the page. No name. If you recognize him, let me know. So now we are, we've arrived in France. He's now at Bassins in a little town called Lormont. This is about six miles up the river, up the Garonne River from Bordeaux, France. This is where they're building their dock infrastructure, uh, a massive railroad set of tracks in a big six mile loop to a, a huge supply uh, a storage area there along with huge storage sheds right there along their docks so they can unload put them on trains get them out or just move them immediately right into storage where there are train tracks there it's just a really really intense and we'll get into that in a, in, in, in a later sh uh, show um, so this is one of his really good friends because he took several photographs of him so this one says W.S. Jennings, one of my squad mates at Camp Bassins. A lot of mud. He's got his rain gear on, smoking a pipe. Um, I think it's William Jennings, but I'll have to double check. And again, here we are. My brother at KP Kitchen Patrol. W.S. Jennings is written on the picture. Jennings at the wood pile at Camp Bassins. So let's take a look at this picture for a minute. So first of all, you want to cook some food? You need a fire? You better go to the wood pile. You want to do your laundry? You want to heat some water up? You better go to the wood pile. Ooh, it's cold in the barracks. Let's, let's get that up. Oh. Better go to the wood pile. Think about how spoiled we are, folks. We just go over and flip a switch and a little box on top of our roof kicks on and we, we have heat or we have a fireplace. And As you look at these uh, this building set up, I'm not sure why there's that huge tarp on the corner of that building. You can see some guys you know, walking by in the background. You see a guy standing in an open doorway there. And you can see several barrels that have lettering that probably designate the areas that they're supposed to be in or who they belong to. And there's uh, Mr. Jennings. So he says, my brother uh, Jennings at the wood pile. And this next one is, again, one of my favorites. And there's my father, Ernest Earl Christian. Earning mine is what he's, he's got on there. There's the wood pile, different angle. Myself at the same place at Camp Bassins. Now, when I was 10 years old, my dad was 70, and he had guns on him that not messing around. He was taking names and kicking ass. Not literally, but he was a no-nonsense guy. He had baseballs. He had baseballs. I remember he flexed for me one time and it was like hard as a rock. And he was 70. No nonsense guy. Very little joking around with him. All business. 
a good picture. It's one of my favorites. Here's some more names. Let's try and identify these people. Kitchen police for three weeks with Jennings, Christian, Reese, Bat Reese. I'll show you a picture in another uh, segment of Bat Reese and a guy named Brunswick. So if, you, if your last name was Jennings, Reese, or Brunswick, I have pictures of your, of your family members in World War I. More of the same. A part of every day's routine while on KP. Washing them dirty dishes. So, you see an axe buried in the log back there. See a bucket. I mean, just... That... that look at all the wood chips. Look at all the, the splinters and from all the wood that's been split there. It's just... Man, and that's probably the kitchen in the background there. And it's a pretty big area. You got you got quite a few men, you know, several hundred men there, uh, scattered through all these barracks. He writes on this one, on the photo itself. Campaigning in France with the 18th Engineers. And then on the page of the photo album, get the campaigning part with the campaigning in, you know, <laughs> parentheses. Or exclamation points, right? So there's Jennings, Brunswick, and I believe that's my dad. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's my dad. I'm pretty sure that's my dad. So they're just cleaning up. You can see uh, there's a guy. No, that's not a guy. That's is that somebody standing. Yeah, that's somebody standing inside there. You can see him. He's got his back to the camera. They all got big old smiles on their face like they're having fun. So again, this is a review of my father's participation in World War I attached to the 18th Engineers Regiment, among the first to go to France in late August of 1917. They're tasked with building a, a 4,000 uh, uh, foot massive dock structure so several ships can berth end to end and offload men and food munitions to be pulsed to the war front. That's how wars work, right? You gotta put infrastructure in place. So I'm hoping with this series, to connect relatives of uh, people involved in World War I and uh, give them a little bit of their family history that they didn't know about. Anyway, that's the end of this segment. Thanks for tuning in. We'll look forward to seeing you again.